Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. So um, I've got my good friend Christian over here. And um, have you ever been on the show before? I have not been on the show. Okay. I've been on the other side of the camera watching you do the yes. show. Yes, yes. Been in the audience, and then we had a, we had a two dudes talking over Skype one day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, so we're, we're, at, we're hanging out at Christian's place, and um, we, we're going to have pool wine, but it's raining today. Like... The one day it's actually raining. Well, it kind of rained yesterday a little bit. And it's supposed to rain even more tomorrow, but this is the day I have to do it based upon what's going on with the, you know, what's, what's going on with my medical stuff, which the thing by the, the thing. time you see this, I should be on the, well, I should be home recovering. So anyway, um, so we're going to pool wine. I've got some wines that were kindly donated to me from my good friends over at uh, Southern Glaciers Wine and Spirits. Um, so for my first Friday's tasting I do with them, um, we were kind of joking around about wines and stuff like that and we and somehow the the subject of this wine came up and they're like well I'll give you some samples and I said okay can I review them and they said yes so I have their permission um, and then Christian brought some goodies mm -hmm. uh, so we're gonna try some other pool type wine and also uh, a yeah. surprise at the very end yeah a pool essential in the summer in Texas yeah I'm scared but um <laughs> 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 anyway, I think I've only done one of those once uh, with you. Yeah. Yeah, and you in arms. So anyway, um, so shall we get into doing some wine here? I feel like we're missing the point a little bit. We're talking about pool stuff. I know it's raining in the back, but I'm wearing a work shirt. You're wearing a soccer early shirt. Not even the World Cup. That's the only, only one I have. <laughs> I have an idea. All right. See that? I there was a girl there. It's, where'd she come from? I don't know. Let's go back. So look, it's Laura Lynn. Hey. What do you know? All right. So um, we, we got into our pool attire. Feels better. Yeah. Uh, Sun's fresh. out. Guns out. Sun's not out. There's really no guns here. <laughs> but I did get, make sure to get my Star Wars tank top I bought today because mm -hmm. he made me buy one. That's right. And I got the pimp at the pimp. Sorry. No um. <laughs> No profanity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or, you know, it's okay. Yeah. Well, I got the pimp, the pimp hat, and it's actually Laurel Wynn's hat. Because um, <clears throat> I forgot to bring one. It's my anyway, he's mine. Anyway, I'm rocking it. So, uh, anyway, oh, we're going to do this on camera anyway, uh, just so we all know we don't ever mention the name of the place I work. Okay. okay. That's the key. Um, that's just in case it pops up, mm, whatever. Because okay. I keep myself separated from that. All right. Um, so, we are going to do some wines here. And so, like I said, I brought the, the these wines from Southern, uh, Southern, Wine, Southern Wine and Spirits. And... Um, we each are we each going to do a wine now let me give you some facts about this stuff first before we get into the wine so i, I got some notes here uh so first of all why is it wine in a can so first you know the wine in a can concept they i think they started this about four or five years ago uh they they came up with this idea the, it's, it's a from a winery called union wine company in oregon so they make like regular wine in bottles but they they were talking about Creating something else that was, I guess, pool friendly or you know, out at, out at a barbecue, or whatever. You don't have any glass, and they um, decided that the, the can, basically a beer can, would be a great way to do it instead of like plastic bottles. Um, so these are actually 375 milliliter cans. They're not 12 ounces. It works out to about 12.7 ounces uh, because uh, so it comes out to half a bottle of wine. Um, the reason it's that weird of a, an amount is that in the United States and really in the European Union, basically everywhere, wine has to be in containers of a certain type of or certain size. So 
it has to be in multiples of like full bottle, which is 750, and then uh, then multiples or halves, like so. Half this is a half bottle, 3775. A three quarter bottle would be 500. You have a split, which is 187. Um, these don't exactly equate to exactly one glass. Like this is approximately two glasses of wine, um, half of a bottle. I mean, if you're in a place where your 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 glass is six ounces, then yes, this is two glasses of wine. But the standard glass of wine, pretty much agreed upon internationally, is five ounces. Um, it's also at 12% alcohol. So that's the equivalent of a 12 ounce beer at five ounces of alcohol, or one and a half ounces of hard liquor at 80, 80 proof or 40% alcohol. So this is technically 2.54 glasses of wine. Um, these, the two of them are 12 ounce, 12% 12 and one's 13% alcohol so we're right there but if you're drinking that 15% like Zinfandel from California you're, you're drinking a lot um, so uh, what about so what about the can so is this like you know beer goes bad um, soda can go bad they have you know they have, they have you know um, uh, born on dates and expiration dates and best before and all that well wine doesn't really have an expiration date I'm not saying that wine lasts forever because we know it doesn't but um, it's not. It's not based. It's not the can that prevents the the product from being able to last a long time. It's the product. They have they have relatively short shelf lives. Mm -hmm. So um, wine doesn't have a, technically have a shelf life. So these these wines, if they were designed to age, which they are not, um, they could last 50, 60 years in the can. Um, what makes the can superior to every other way to um, store wine is that there's no light you can get into it. Light's bad for wine. Um, that's why they tell you to store it in a cool, dark place. A dark side, if yeah, you will. Yeah, the dark side, yeah. Um, <laughs> and, I said like that. Um, and then um, it has the lowest what's called oxygen transfer rate, or called OTR. Has a, that aluminum cans have the lowest amount compared to any other uh, thing. Like this is screw cap. Screw cap's the next best thing. Um, because it pretty much doesn't let any oxygen. It's very, very little. And then you have cork that lets varying amounts of oxygen. Then you have bag in a box, which helps with the, the light part. Mm -hmm. Okay, because you know, no light because it's the the, um, the boxes surrounding it. But the uh, those bags are biodegradable, I think, so they don't last as long. So like they're not gonna not gonna you're not gonna have a, a wine lake in your fridge in three months. But the the amount of oxygen that can get in through those bags um, actually is pretty, it's actually quite a bit compared to everything else. Um, they're also meant to be drank. I think they tell you to drink within 18 months of buying it. Uh, and it's not because the product's going bad, it's just because the, 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 the materials they use start start allowing too much oxygen, which means you're going you're gonna to hurt the wine. Not hurt the wine, but the wine's going to age and oxidize. That's not, you don't want that, right? No. Right. No. Okay. Um, wine wouldn't last that long in my fridge. Right. <laughs> so the tech sheets I got from the website all say 2017 for a vintage, but there's no vintage on the can. So I don't know if the 17 is the newest vintage. I can tell you that I looked underneath, and two of these I have, I think it's 2016, and one says 2015. So they may actually be their vintage, and then and it's like, and there's like a time stamp um, as to, I guess, when it was canned. Um, so I don't know if there's an actual vintage to these things or they're non-vintage and this, that's when it was canned or bottled. Um, and then uh, they have seven different wines in a can. They have these three, which is a Rosé, a um, Pinot Noir, and a Pinot Grigio. They also have a Riesling, a regular sparkling wine, they have a sparkling Rosé. Um, and then, see, so that, that's only six. What am I missing here? Pinot Yeah, there's the seventh one. I don't remember which. I don't remember what the, the other one is. Um, three, six. There should be one. Whatever. There'll be a link below to go to the website. No, like, we're gonna find the, when I find this, you're gonna one. see the answer here. Um, they average. <laughs> yeah, they average um, twenty-eight dollars per per four pack which comes out to $7 a can. Um, so if you figure out that this is a half of a bottle, it's the equivalent of a $14 bottle of wine. Uh, the Riesling is $24 for the, for the four pack, so that's a um, dollar less 
So $12 for the bottle, a dollar less per can. So very reasonable, and that's the goal of this winery. Their, their high-end wine is $28 a bottle, and that's the Alchemist. And then they have a Knight's Ridge, which is like the equivalent quality level as these, or may even be lower because this is a cheaper, um, this is, it's cheaper to can than bottle. So I don't know. Anyway, their, their, their bottles range around 14 to 18 bottles for the Knight's Ridge, and Al they have two, two Alchemists, and they're like their top end. And, mm -hmm. uh, grapes from the vineyards that they source out of this $28 a bottle. Um, they also, for the cans, they have a hashtag called Pinkies Down because, you know, when you're drinking your glass, you have your pinky up, and when you've got your can in your hand, there's no pinky up, right? So that's their little, <laughs> little like, thing to say, don't be a snob with your, with your wine can. You should put your pinky under the, under the can to make sure you can drop it. There you go. <laughs> no problem. Exactly. I know you are. So that is actually all the little like things. And I think they were founded, well, the guy moved to Oregon in 2001 that started the company, but he didn't say when he founded the wine company. So I don't know when that is. Um, and I think that's all the basic stuff uh, going on. When we actually get into the wines, we'll, we'll talk about those a little bit more. So uh, Kristen and Laura will um, drink their wines first and kind of talk about it because it'd be kind of cool to have like just ordinary people. I mean, these are friends of mine. I didn't just randomly pick them off the street. Um, so I told them, don't. <laughs> Tell me, I don't. Laura was more nervous in. about it because she doesn't want to say anything wrong or bad in front of the psalm, but I don't care. And um, I don't have the, right the words. vast majority of my viewers are people like you. So uh, I'm not saying I don't have what do you wine mean snobs. Like me? <laughs> you mean like me? Like you wear baseball hat? Yeah, backwards even. I mean, can, can you at least show what, what, what team you're repping? The 2017 World Champion Cubs? Yeah. Who won it last year? Doesn't matter. Yeah, the Astros. She's was, an Astros. Who, who are about to hopefully tonight get their 13th win in a row, which is the franchise record. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, UT lost uh, today in their elimination game, the College World Series. That's what happens when Sorry. you play the game. Sorry. All right, so what are you picking? You're going to do the Pinot Gris? Pinot Gris. All right, so Pinot Gris. Um, uh, can well, I open it? Yeah, you can open it. I don't even know. Yeah, it sounds like Wonderful. a soda or a beer can, right? Ears. So you may be also you may be ordering what, aluminum. Is it okay to drink it right out of the aluminum can? Well, you drink beer out of aluminum can, right? It doesn't hurt it. Yeah. Um, you drink soda out of aluminum can, it doesn't hurt it. Soda's actually more caustic than wine. But all the cans are lined, so there won't be any interaction with the aluminum. Um, aluminum is actually very safe for all this. So you can drink it totally out of the can. You don't have to have a glass or anything like that. Um, that's one thing I forgot to talk about. So. Um, Anyway, so this uh, Pinot Gris is, assuming that this fact sheet is the exact can, is 88% Willamette Valley, 6% uh, Aola Amity Hills, 4% Umpqua Valley, and 2% the Applegate Valley. So these are all little areas in Oregon that they've sourced the grapes from. Um, it does have a slight bit of residual sugar, so it might be very, very slightly sweet. Um, and I already drank some. Good. Um, <laughs> Its cellar treatment is 100%. I did it when you looked away. Perfect. Uh, its cellar treatment is 100% stainless steel, so it's using stainless steel, so it's no oak, and it's 12.6%. Well, this is, I think it says 12. I don't know. I, Let's see. It's hard to read. It looked like 12. 13. That says 13. So that says 13. So this is obviously up to 2017. So their percentages on where they get the grapes from might be slightly off, but I'm sure it has a very bit, very slight. It's a little it's sweet. A little sweet, but not like sweet, sweet. Mm -mm. No. no, it's perfect. I actually have the sweet one. I'm going to have the sweet one. Spoiler alert. The sweet one. <laughs> anyway, um, so how do you like it? Yeah, what do you, it's do you like um, it? Is it refreshing? It's refreshing. It is, I'm trying to figure out, it's a little like pear to where it's pear? a little sweet, but not too sweet. Okay. Um, it's making it? my mouth water. Okay. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it means it has a little bit of acid. So uh, on the pH scale, it's 3.29, which is actually a fairly acidic wine. Okay. Uh, that makes wines sense. range anywhere between 2.7. That's like super acidic. Usually that's like a really bone dry champagne, mm -hmm. sparkling wine. Yeah. Um, upwards to about 3.9. You don't really get to 4 on mm -hmm. the pH. And so for all the chemistry nerds, pH, you already know what pH is. For you non-chemistry nerds, pH is a logarithmic, a logarithmic scale. So while 2.7 to 3.9 doesn't sound like a lot, it's a lot. Um, and then um, its total acidity is 
0.1 grams per liter, which it's, it's got some good acid to it. Mm -hmm. So yes, so that's why your mouth's watering. Okay. How would, the, how would the tannins? Can you see the tannins? There should the, be no tannins. The, no tannins, <laughs> right. You might have something called phenolic bitterness, which is the exact same thing as tannin in white wine, but it shouldn't be, there should be no bitterness, right? Do you get any no, bitterness? No, no bitterness. bitterness on, the, on, the, on the gums or the tongue, mm -mm. but you have a little sharpness. It is right down. Yeah, like right down, like yeah. linear, very linear, mm -hmm. like right down, okay. It's good, it's good. It's, I would imagine, I mean, it's perfect for the pool. Yeah, it's, it's been awesome, the right, yeah. Um, and just easy to stow. You know, because yeah. you're always wondering, like when you bring a bottle of wine, I forgot my wine opener. You end up using like a Absolutely. drill or something crazy, and this is just easy, perfect, mm -hmm. and it doesn't taste bad at all. Yeah, it's actually one of my favorites. So you said pear. Do you get anything else out of it? Let's see. I'll just keep drinking until yeah. I mm -hmm. yeah, let's see. Just because that's actually anywhere. one of the, one of the tasting notes says pear. They have three Whoa! things on here. You got that one. I'm right. a professional. I'm a did song. You, did you chug it? No. Oh, okay. I looked away. I Apple. <laughs> Okay, sure. If you get it, it's there. I'm Are good. you sure? Yeah, there's no wrong you answer. You have to tell me. No, I want, I want to see what you taste versus oh, what they're... Oh, wait. Don't oh, you, don't read it. you don't read the back of the label. I found it. It says lemon, apple, and pear. See? So it might... Yeah. I'm better than I thought I was. Do you taste any lemon? Does it taste no. lemony? Okay. Maybe that's what's making my mouth water. It has a citrus, like a real yeah. citrus mm -hmm. quality to it. Yeah. Do you get anything <gasps> floral so out of it? These taste notes from the 17 say yeah, pear, floral, and stone fruit, which a stone fruit is like peach, apricot, that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you get anything? I get peachy? it now that you said it, because yeah. now it's in my mind. I'll taste power it. Power suggestion. Your mind out to your tongue. Yeah. Yeah. It's perfect. You so like it? Yeah. I feel like this aluminum is different than any aluminum that I've touched okay. before. It's not the same as a beer can. I feel like it's a little. Sure. It might be. It might be that they coated the outside also. Okay. I don't know, outside. but definitely the inside's coated. Okay. Um, that's to help prevent the interaction with the aluminum. But for the most part, it, it's it, well. The, the 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 liner helps prevent any interaction. Now, stainless steel doesn't necessarily require. Um, uh, Liner. Any liner when they when they when they make wine in the winery, because um, stainless steel is an in, is a um, is an inert or does not interact at least with wine. It doesn't, mm -hmm. um, and pretty sure it doesn't interact with beer and all that. So that's what they use for fermentation. Um, but uh, yeah, as, yeah, it does, it does feel a little bit different than, than a regular like, does. beer can We're or so soda happy. can. It's perfect. Cool. Cool label. Hi, Christian. What Hi. did you pick? I have the Pinot Noir. She has, he has the Pinot Noir. He goes, he gives me, you review a lot of Pinot Noir, don't you? I was like, well, I review everything. You don't do a lot of rosé. No, I don't do a lot of rosé. You get the rosé. I'm like, sweet, because I love rosé. I love <laughs> so, rosé. You know what? I'm going to change it. I, I don't want That's this. why I wore the Star Wars the little Jedi Maybe that trick. was the missing one, rosé and sparkling rosé. Uh, no, because I have three, and then there was a recently a sparkling wine, a sparkling rosé, and there was a seventh, a seventh wine. So that's okay. six. I don't know if the seventh one, but so they can figure it out. All right, here we go. Pop it. You know, no why. You know why? While you're doing that. All right. So I'm not worried about the percentages because obviously it's not going to be the 2017. But uh, they source uh, Pinot from the Umpqua Valley, Willamette, and Applegate Valley. Um, it is aged in New French Oak on the 2017. It's at 15% New French Oak for eight months. What the this one actually is, I don't know, but I'm sure there's some there's some oak to it. Um, it is it should be dry. There should be no sweetness to it. Um, it's 13 point. Well, I don't know what the alcohol is. This one says 13. 13. Sir. Okay. Cool, and um, it should not be as acidic as Laurelin's, um wine, but there should be at least a little bit of. Um, you know, you should, you're, you're, yeah. you should have a little bit of salivation to it. Yeah, you know, it'd be funny. You're at the point and people see you smelling your can, trying to get some notes. You know, <laughs> you're really gonna get Swirl some. it in the yeah, can. You're yeah, you're really gonna get some uh, some looks. Yeah, and, uh, these are designed to chug. I'm trying to, I'm trying to pull a little bit out to see the uh, color. A nice little color on it. It looks like Pinot. It looks like a Pinot. There you go. <laughs> mm. He's watched me too many times mm -hmm. in these things in person, by the way. That's right. <laughs> Have he's, a, he's have watched, a members he's, club. We've got yeah, we've gone to Max's wine dive and he's seen me do blind tastings. Very solid. You like it? Very yeah. very wholesome. Wholesome, okay. Uh, you know, it, it, it takes care of like your whole mouth. All right. It doesn't just go down Main Street like hers. Okay. Kind of hangs out the whole way. Dry? Yes. A little cherry? Cherry? Perfect. Because that's where you're supposed to get Pinot. Ding. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> some too. <laughs> Pinot, the cherry is the overriding flavor profile for Pinot all over the world. So you would say you that. should get that. You uh, should get that. Well, it's also on here. It's probably on the back of the can too. <laughs> I'm so jealous. <laughs> Do you like some? Try it. Mm, okay. 
Yeah, it's, a good, it's a good amount of dryness. Um, I do get oak, or maybe I'm just okay. thinking about oak. So what what do you what do you equate oak as being? Do you taste actually this tastes like wood or you taste smoky. Like something smoky? Yeah, okay. The so the toast on the oak helps impart smoky characteristics to to wine. Okay. Yeah, I learned that from whiskey. Yes. Anything else that you learn from whiskey that indicates oak? Something that should be overriding. There's a there's a chemical that's present in oak. Um, it's, it's it's good. It's natural. I mean, it's yeah. kryptonite. No, uh, that, that's make ice cream out of it too. Uh, There's a bean. Vanilla bean. Vanilla. Do you taste any vanilla on there? Oh um, no? yeah, I do. So van After. vanillin is the chemical in vanilla, and it's also present in oak. And um, they're using French oak, so it's less vanillin in that versus American oak. Um, it's called USA. vanillin. 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 Sounds like a superhero. Yeah, it's like chillin. Vanilla's like uh, chillin, chillin like, like vanillin. Chillin like vanillin. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> chillin like vanillin. I'm supposed to find out who Vince McMillan is uh, during my during my medical leave, because um, I am always saying I'm chillin like Vince McMillan, and they everyone goes, who's Vince McMillan? I said, I don't know. He's I just made it up. Vince McMahon. <laughs> I, I made up made up the name, so I don't know who Vince McMillan is. If you're Vince McMillan, <laughs> hit me up because I we have to have you on the show somehow, don't Skype or something. That's right. Anyway. So what else you got? Yeah, yeah. It, it, like I said, it, it's 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 a very very traditional. There's not a, it's not trying to do anything crazy. Okay. Um, I would worry about drinking this too fast in the sun. Yeah. Got to hydrate. Um, yeah. It's different than drinking a you know uh, a can of beer. Um, you, you got three times, almost three times the alcohol. That's right. A little more two times the alcohol. So. Uh, but yeah, but I could definitely uh, see see me uh, drinking this at the pool with like a little snack. Yeah. You know, just a kind of a. What kind of snack would you have? Charcuterie board that he was supposed to buy. We were supposed to have a charcuterie board. We're so hungry. Yeah. So hungry. Send food. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but do you want to try? Would you like to try it? See what you see, what you see Mr. I'll Mr. do Mr. mine, and then, then we can then we can swap cans. Okay. We'll play anything, else you want? Yeah. anything else you want? Yeah. Anything else you want to talk no, about? No, it, it, it definitely doesn't taste like I'm drinking out of a can. All right. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that to the Underwoods, and that's the ones from the Netflix series. Uh, good job. So I'm going to throw in a question. Okay. So by I'll the pool, mm -hmm. especially in the Texas heat, yes, we are frying at yes. feels like 110 degrees. Mm -hmm. um, typically, when people drink red wine, they get hot. Yes. So. Really? How do we work with the Pinot Noir by So in this the case pool in Texas. So I would say the reason that red wine makes you get makes you hot. Um, one, most red wines tend to have higher alcohol than white wine. So that right there is also yeah. gonna give you a, a, a hotter sensation. But there's also the um, the, the the tannin. There's tannin present in red wine where there's almost little to no tannin in white wine. Um, it's, it's the process of making wine. So the reason we have red wine is that the, the grapes that they use to make red wine have red have red pigment and they let the skins stay in contact with the grape juice for a while during fermentation or before fermentation, whatever, you know, okay. some point in time during the process. Um, and that's where you get the color extraction. Whereas white wine, they just kind of crush it. So okay. there's things called press and crush. So Red wines are pressed, white wines are crushed, they're basically the same thing. Um, but they're crushed and so, they're, so the juice goes immediately off the skins and then they, they throw away the skins. Um, but on some white, white wines, they allow the skin contact to be just a little bit mm -hmm. um, or the skins like something like a, um, uh, a Chardonnay can have some phenolic bitterness. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's basically just a white wine version of tannin. Okay. So um, if there's enough skin contact, you'll get a little bit of, of grippiness on, yeah. on the palate versus tannin like just coats you, mm -hmm. like on red wine. So that that's also there. Plus um, there's more stuff with red wine. Like there's, so you have the anthocyanins, that's what gives you the color. So you've got other things that, that give you first of all the mouth feel but mm -hmm. it's just going to give you a more warm feeling that's kind of a guess at that point but the alcohol and the tannins for sure are going to give you the, yeah. the warmer feeling um and then everything else is just there's they're more robust and that's why you're going to so get find that. a beach on the east coast yeah. for red wine. now if you're going to drink red wine at the beach pinot noir would be the wine that i would suggest because it's a later red wine mm -hmm. i would not suggest drinking napa cab or any type of Cabernet Sauvignon, or the Darth Vader of grapes, Tanat. I love that wine. Um, and uh, so I would, I would not suggest drinking that like out in the pool yeah. in 100 degree weather. Okay. 
I have a question. Noted. I have an answer. What is the protocol? You know how when you're tasting wine, you, you spit a little bit out. Can you spit it into the pool? What do you think people would say? Well, I would avoid spitting the red wine in the pool because then it'll look like someone's bleeding in there and then there was there for Yeah. yeah. Mm. I mean, I feel unless you're going to have like fun with that. I would, sure. I would avoid spitting it into the pool. And I'd also avoid like trying to, if you're going to like go from one wine to the other and you want like a rinse, I'd avoid like drinking the pool water because you know, all the chlorine. It cleans but, it though. Yeah. Now, if it was white wine, it's kind of like peeing in the pool and nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> You were you were waiting for that. You were gonna say that, weren't you? Yeah, I, I beat him to the yeah. I beat him to the punchline on that. All right, so um, we're gonna do the rosé. So um, this rose is this is kind of weird because yeah, so it's a rosé wine, but most of the grapes are white wine in this thing. Um, again, assuming that. Um, uh, the percentages are going to be close. I won't read the percentages, but I'll read it in order of what's the most. Well, I'll read the percentages on this one. But anyway, so we sort, they source from Willamette, Umpqua, Aola Amity Hills, and Columbia Gorge on the Oregon side, um, not on the Washington side. Um, anyway, uh, it's slightly acidic. Um, not quite as acidic as the Pinot Gris, I don't think. No, <laughs> um, but it's le more acidic than the Pinot, um, so it's kind of in between. Um, it's got 5.1 grams of residual sugar, so there definitely is going to be a little bit of sweetness to it. It's not going to be like sure. a sweet wine. It's not going to be necessarily like White Zin, but White Zin is a rosé. Okay, and um, anyway, so their varietals, they on the 17, they said 61% Pinot Gris, 21% Riesling, 11% Muscat, and 7% Pinot Noir. So the Riesling and the Muscat right there. I was going to say, the Muscat's usually really that's sweet. That's where you're getting your residual sugar. I mean, mm -hmm. all wine can be made sweet, um, but those are, those are wines that typically are made sweet anyway. But you can make a sweet Pinot Gris, you can make a sweet Pinot Noir if you want. I don't know why you would, but you can if I do it in Texas because they love sweet red wine. Um, Amen. Yeah, nothing against me. If you like sweet red wine, more power to you, man, because, you know, more people drinking wine, the better. Um, so those are the, uh, and it says 12, 100% stainless steel as far as the cellaring. So there's no, no, no oak on it. And it's just straight up 12% alcohol. So let's uh, pop it open. Chug, 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 chug. <laughs> It smells like wine. It's not every day you see a sommelier with a can of wine. Oh, he's got his friends oh, gonna beat him up in the alley. I guess I should make sure I have the product, you know. <laughs> um, it's tasty. It's not super sweet. It's got a touch of sweetness to it. Um, a little bit of acid to it. Um, it's, I get more, I get it like like a like a sour cherry almost, and then there's like a little bit of watermelon, um, a little bit of um, uh, strawberry to it, um, like almost like a strawberry candy. Um, there's not much, it's, it's it's only fruit driven. Um, it feels a little bit like the maybe because I haven't had anything to eat, but it feels. <laughs> and that, Thanks, Christian. It's not really you. I mean, okay. um, but it's more like just thinking about like I that I feel the burn a little bit. Um, but it's only twelve percent alcohol, so that's that's a good amount. I mean, that's like okay. I like I like low alcohol wine. It's definitely tasty and. If this is something that you're going to enjoy, you're going to like it. Now, we'll see what else they say for freaking tasty notes. Oh, they talk about peach also. Um, I could see that maybe. That's interesting for a rosé, I feel I like. Could, yeah. Right? And really, almost all rosés are going to have watermelon and strawberry. Like, pretty much they all do. Like, I, I mean, I already saw that it said that, but and it wasn't like I'm going to repeat it. But, but I do get a little cherry, like a little sour cherry, like a little, like the, um, like sour cherry candies. Um, and it's not as sweet as I thought it was going to be. Uh, the acid might be helping balance the sugar on that. So acid, so Coke or soft drinks, they have a ton of sugar in it, right? But they also have a ton of acid. Okay. Because there's, there's going to be a balance with it. Otherwise, if you didn't have the, all the acid in there, it would just be too sweet. It'd be too sugary sweet. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't have as much sugar in there, then it would be too acidic. So you wouldn't. It would be undrinkable. So in this case, there's a. I mean, this is not a. This is not a lot of residual sugar, but it's more than your typical wine. Uh, it's more than that, but the acid is helping to balance it. But hers has less residual sugar and more acid. So, but there's still a bit of a sweetness to it, and that also can be from the from the. Uh, 
uh, fruit can give you an apparent sweetness. Mm-hmm. So people say, I want a sweet wine. They really want something that's fruity, not actually sweet, technically. Mm-hmm. So that's why, as a psalm, you have to kind of go, do you mean you want something fruity? Yes. Okay. So I know what you want, not what you're telling me. Mm-hmm. It's like also working in a steakhouse. I want my steak medium. Okay. That's going to be this. And then it comes out perfect medium. It's raw. Okay. So you want well done. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, it's tasty. I like it. So I feel like rosé is very trendy. Mm-hmm. I feel like people like rosé just because they see rosé all day. They so, don't even know why they're drinking it or why they're so into it. They like probably don't even like it. <laughs> yeah, I, I just feel like rosé is, is a is making, wonderful wine. It's you know, been making a comeback come for years. Yeah. Okay, In every year, rosé is a. Rosé is like making a comeback. No, it comes back during the summer because yeah. that's when people know. That's when people think that's when they should Don't drink it. Don't call it a comeback. It's been here for years. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, a little softball for you. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, <clears throat> rosé can be enjoyed all year round. It does not have I to be a summer. I drink it all year, so yeah. I, I don't. I'm not a. I'm not only you're not in a rosé snob. No, I'm not. <laughs> you're not a fair I'll weather rosé. <laughs> fair weather rosé drinker. Yeah. Pinky down, pinky up. It doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's 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 a great, easy drinking wine. It pairs with a good amount of food. Barbecue. Um, yeah, I mean it, it's it's a great wine for all types of stuff. Don't fear the pink. Um, unfortunately, white zin um, kind of <laughs> messed it up for all rosé. Or it, gets, it started off this it started off this trend of blush rosés wines um, that everyone thinks rosé is sweet. It doesn't have to be sweet. Matter of fact, the best rosés are dry. Actually, mm-hmm. some of them are bone dry. So um, yeah, rosé is awesome. I feel, and I have a confession, I didn't know White Zin was a rosé. So White Zin, so... I only, I, I thought it was only, I don't know if we can say <laughs> Arbor Mist, but I always thought White Zinfandel, Arbor Mist, that's all I knew, that's the only White Zin that existed. So you want to know what, what makes a rosé a rosé? So first of all, what's a rosé? A rosé means that there's, there's a wine that, with red grapes in it, which there's four different grapes in here and three of them are white grapes, right? So, and there's only 7% Pinot Noir. So in this case, the, the very little amount of Pinot Noir and can help, will help contribute to the color. But what's really happening with, with a rosé is they allow the skin contact with the juice for only a short period of time. Usually a day or two at most. There's also a way to make a rosé called the sangue method, which means bleed or blood in French. I, I might have pronounced that word Sangue. quite. That might have, you know, but sanguine, I mean, it's all Latin based. Um, but what they do is they, they bleed off some of the some of the wine early on. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, so you get that rosé color. So they also can make a rosé by making a white wine. And this might have been what they kind of did here, but they may have done it the traditional way. And you put just a small amount of red into a white wine. Perfect. Certain parts of the world that's illegal, it is not illegal as far as in the United States. Um, however, I don't know if this wine could be sold in the EU in certain parts, but it could be. It, it kind of depends on the appellation system mm-hmm. you're using and all that. All of these are appellated Willamette, so it's not just Oregon. Well, no, they can't be appellation Willamette because they don't have not, they don't have enough Willamette in there. So it's just Oregon appellation. Um, so that's how you make a rosé. Now, how did the white Zin happen? So. Sutter Home was, you know, making their Zinfandel like they always did. This is like in the 70s or whatever. And um, they had a, it was called a stuck fermentation. So that just meant that the yeast kind of went to sleep. They're like, oh, we're done. And there's a lot of residual sugar left over. Um, and the color um, hadn't taken yet. So they freaked out, okay? Like, we have like, tens, hundreds of thousands of gallons of this stuff that we're not going to be able to sell. And someone like tasted it and was like, I don't know, I think we can sell it. It's kind of sweet. <laughs> I bet you we market it the right way. We'll sell it. So see this, and they call it a white Zinfandel. All right. So it's a rosé. It's the same, mm-hmm. same idea as rosé, but the, the thing is the fermentation stopped. That's how you get that's how you get residual sugar in wine is somewhere along the line the fermentation stops so that you don't, so the yeasts are done with it. You can, there's various ways of doing it. 
you can inoculate. You can uh, you can hit it with SO2 that 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 stops the uh, yeast from forming. You can do other things. You can add alcohol. You can make it a high alcohol wine. That's what port wine is um, during the fermentation process. Um, sometimes you just use yeast that can only go above. They can't they can't produce alcohol above a certain amount. Yeast in general stop at around 15 or the maximum they can do is 15 percent. Um, the yeast they use in this might just naturally stop around 12 or 13 percent. Mm -hmm. um, so you can have that much residual sugar. Um, but in, in the case of like the Pinot, there isn't really any residual sugar. So they could have also been picking the grapes at a point where the amount of sugar in the grape was low enough so that when they use the yeast, it's going to eat all the sugar and still be at 12 percent naturally without doing anything. There's also, also things also called also things called reverse osmosis, um, which is like a quote dirty little secret in the wine industry. It is not necessarily illegal anywhere in the world, depending on where you are. But um, it, with the with global warming, climate change, um, and 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 grapes getting higher and higher sugar levels in them, um, and people not necessarily wanting 15% plus wines. Also, when you get above 15% or 15% and higher in the United States and other parts of the world, it's higher tax for the wine. So the winemakers are paying a higher amount. So that's why you'll see 14.9, and it really is maybe 15 and a half. They have a little wiggle room because mm -hmm. there's bottle variation with alcohol. Um, so you can have um, some, so you have a winemaker who's like, look, we had a really, really like hot vintage and I don't want my wines above 14% or something like that. So they can legally reduce the alcohol up to upwards of about 2%, depending on the, where you are in the world. Um, so reverse osmosis is one of those. There's also a filtration, I think it's called cross filtration. I just read about this like yesterday on my wine science book. Um, so these are ways to get, to remove alcohol. It can also remove water. Maybe you have a higher concentration of your, of the grape, it's called a must when you're before it's fermented. So there's things you can do in the winery. Um, I have talked about highly manipulated wines. You can add sugar, called chapelization. You can add acid, called acidification, um, to try to correct the wines based upon what happens during the vintage. Because you know, if, if this was harvest right now, and you're, and, but you need to pick the grapes. Well, water, you know, dilutes the grapes, so you can do must concentration. So you, you know, you can take the water out mm -hmm. versus the alcohol out. Um, so there's things you can do with with wine to help it be what you want instead of quote letting the terroir speak for itself. I mean, honestly, do you want to drink really bad wine that's thin and anemic or doesn't <laughs> taste good? Do you really want to drink that? No. Now when so, you put it that way. <laughs> no. I mean. Yeah, they, if the winemaker is manipulating the wine to make it taste good, that's you know when it I should already wine. when it should already taste but good. That's fine. I mean, I can see that. You know, there's plenty of people. You know, some of these wines are super delicious and they're crowd pleasers. And you know what? They, the average person doesn't really care if if they you know have really really ripe grapes uh, and they maybe added some sugar or they added. Um, they added mega purple to it to give it extra color, and it also gives you mm -hmm. some extra mouthfeel qualities. And these are all legal additives, you know. Does they, it taste good, and is the label nice? That's all I. I mean. That's, that's how people. I mean, really when, I, when I go buy wine at the store marketing. for review, I look at the labels and I go, "This is yeah. a cool label," because that's how I know most people buy wine. Mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily looking at anything. I mean, I may look at the label. Who's cool label? Is there a story on here? Is there other information? You know, and, and is the price point good? If mm -hmm. it's a cool label. Mm -hmm. And, but if it's also like a very subtle label, then I'm like interested. I'm like, yeah. are you being low key delicious? Right. That's my question. Low key delicious. Yeah. yeah. That was my nickname in middle school. <laughs> low key delicious? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I highly doubt that. I doubt maybe it too. low key yeah. or maybe delicious, right. but not both. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so we're talking about low key. Um, for an April Fool's joke, uh, several years ago, I posted a press release on my website that I was creating a wine called Loki. Um, I remember this, and it was going to be the um, oh, where is it? It's, it's actually it's an actual place in Oregon. It's in Appalachian. Um, and it's a Pinot Noir, and so Pinot Noir is one of the most fussy and finicky grapes out there, mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. also called the trickster grape. So Loki being the trickster Loki. god. <laughs> so do not steal it. Yeah. I haven't. I yeah. haven't had a so I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Low key. Some point in time, I'm going to do it. It's from the, um, oh, what was the valley I decided it was from? Um, the shadow of death. The rogue, rogue valley. That's it. Rogue valley. Because Loki's a rogue. 
It was perfect. So do not steal my idea. I, I called dibs on it first. I probably should. You're I, welcome. You should, I, should, I probably should buy the URL tonight. Yeah, lokiwine.com or something like that. Anyway, so do uh, you guys want to swap wines? You want to check yeah. check out and see who? I, I got some of these guys here as well. Got some this? of these. Uh, oh, God. This is a uh, little, mos little Moscato. A little Moscato, a uh, little barefoot. They, they, they are themed a little bit, so uh, this this will be a little bit of a, a, a little blind testing because it's not just Moscato, it's an, it's, it's influenced by a certain flavor. Okay, now what I'm going to do real quick, um, just because there's no movement on here, so I'm just going to make sure that it's actually Inception. <laughs> so I'm going to take my microphone off. Also, the light never turned off. No, it's red. There's a red light. No, there's no light on there. You're going to turn the light on. Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, but you know what? The exposure's good. Your exposure. Hold my microphone. <laughs> okay, we're good. Okay, good. That's all I can Oh, thank you, Jesus. That's all that matters. <coughs> well, the, the, the back camera on the phone is way better than the front camera, so that's why we're using that. But we're not. We're, is we're this not... technically a cut right now? No. No, just Oops. kidding. Sorry. Bloopers. Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. We'll fix it in post. Oh, well, yeah, I'll cut it out. There we go. So, yeah, so this is from the uh, the famed Barefoot Winery. Uh, it's Moscato, but uh, it has a little theme to it. We'll see if you guys can pick it up. Okay. I kind so, of forgot, um, so So, Barefoot, I, 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 I read the story of them. They seem to be really cool people. Um, it, it's the, the Barefoot name has, I forgot what the story is, so I'll link to the winery, um, but there's a, there's a reason why it's called Barefoot. I think I think it's like the guy who started always like ne never wore shoes. Mm. I think that's why they call it. Or maybe he's always on the beach. No, like he just never wears shoes. Oh. I mean, that's obviously, right. if he needs to wear shoes, he's going to. But he he like tries to live his life, I think, without wearing shoes type of thing. And that's why they call it Barefoot. Um, and it started like in the 70s or, or I mean, it's been around a long time. And they have their ideas. They want easy drinking, fun mm -hmm. wines. Wines at Psalms are not going to be like, oh, this is, no. They're, Psalms might enjoy them, but they're not going to get serious about it. So also, that, these are plastic bottles, so yeah. those are the thing. You do not want to walk in. Right, with the pool. The pool. And screw caps, so we know that they're going to hold very well. Mm -hmm. So I've got, I've got the Moscato here. Mm -hmm. Moscato here. Get barefoot and have a great time, that's what it says. Mm-hmm. So I think I'm, they, they've never. I don't think they've ever reached out to me to, to review wine. I mean, I've talked with their reps. Hit them up, man. Anyway, um, it tastes like a moscato. It's sweet. It's refreshing. I mean, I'm not necessarily. It's pretty crisp. Yeah. For a moscato, usually yeah. they're just super sweet and just. Yeah, well, it's not. It's not sickly sweet. No. It's not it's terrible. Sweet. It's refreshingly sweet. Probably only have one of these because. So this should be 187 milliliters, which is approximately equivalent to a glass of wine. Is this half of this? Yes. Math. <laughs> All right, we have one more. So, oh, I mean, Moscato in general, I'm not like, I'm not going to necessarily like seek out, but like, if this is what was available, um, I probably would, dr I'd probably drink it. The Pinot. No, I'd probably drink this. Grigio. I'd probably drink the Pinot Grigio over the Moscato, just because. Even though it's not sickly sweet, it's still got residual sugar, and I'd probably rather have it. I think this is the one that had a theme. One. It had a flavor to it. I forgot what it was. It had a flavor? It had a flavor. Citrus? Lemon, lime? Hmm. Can you tell me? Well, that's usually what it has. Ugh. <laughs> I think this was one that was like pear, pear and something. Very pear. Mm hmm? Yeah, it Very said pear. actually pear on the thing. I left the packaging downstairs. Tastes like Pinot Grigio. Pinot Grigio. Mm -hmm. Also a plastic. Which is the same grape as Pinot Gris, just so you know. Mm. Pinot Grigio is the Italian name for Pinot Gris. Pinot Gris oh. is a mutation of Pinot Noir. It's the gray version of Pinot Noir. Perfect. And Pinot Blanc is the white version of Pinot Noir. Mm. So they're all the same grape. They're all, they literally are the same grape. Mm -hmm. You could make the exact same wine from all three. Um, the problem is that <clears throat> Because of the skin, you wouldn't, you couldn't really get, like you could get the same juice out of it, but the skin is what gives you the differences. Mm -hmm. Okay, especially with Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Pinot Blanc is usually even lighter than Pinot Gris or Grigio. And Pinot Grigio, and so 
If if uh, a New World winemaker puts Pinot Grigio, they're trying to make an Italian style wine, so it's supposed to be super refreshing, super light. As a master sommelier once said, I heard him literally say this: Pinot Grigio is a coarse light of wine, tastes like nothing. And it's not necessarily to to bash Pinot Grigio, but it's not meant to be serious. It's not meant to be like a serious wine. Whereas if they put Pinot Gris on it, they're trying to evoke the French style from Alsace, mm -hmm. which tends to have a little bit more oomph to it, a little more body, maybe a little more flavor to it, mm -hmm. but it's still not going to be like a totally serious wine. I have a wild um, card question for you. Okay. So I like bubbles. Bubbles, I love bubbles. And I like white wine. Yeah. In my early stages of wine drinking, I really liked Pinot Grigio because it was the safe white. Yes, it is. But knowing what I know now, I love, you know, like the, like you said, the Pinot Blanc, the Pinot Gris. Mm -hmm. um, what would a sparkling Pinot Grigio equate to? Um, I don't know of anyone who actually makes a sparkling <laughs> Pinot Grigio, but if you wanted something like that, I mean, pretty much any any sparkling wine is going to be like, if you got Prosecco? It's going to be like, yeah. Okay, um, that's going to be, should be pretty close to that. And, you know, so you don't have to do a champagne, mm -hmm. um, but any sparkling wine is going to be pretty much, now there are some sparkling wines in general that are better than others, so Sekt, which is S-E-K-T from Germany, while there are good sect out wines out there, it's not necessarily considered like a premium mm -hmm. sparkling wine. Um, your your kind of your best value is Cava from Spain. Mm -hmm. um, they they uh, tend to be very champagne like. It's usually they usually use the quote champagne method, which means there's a second fermentation that happens in the bottle. Um, so. Uh, uh, Cava tends to have that as their as their as their method, so it tends to be the most champagne like, but not for champagne price. Mm -hmm. Prosecco can be quite a quite a wide range of stuff. Um, you can have they they just in, in, inserted CO two like you know when you get your soda out of a gun, mm -hmm. okay? Um, or it can be I don't know if any prosecco that's champagne method. Maybe mm -hmm. I highly doubt it because it, it gets expensive. Mm -hmm. um, then you have French Accorda, which uh, unfortunately I don't have. I've never had a lot of French Accorda, but it's another Italian wine. Mm -hmm. um, it's a Somme darling of a wine. So you know, you know me, I'm, I don't follow Somme trends necessarily. Everyone loves Riesling. They think Riesling, they think Riesling is the best wine in the world. The I, think it's, I think it's good. Um, everyone like goes completely nuts for Burgundy, white and red. I'm like, it's good. And I'm with the Burgundy. I, I get Burgundy now. I'm drinking way more Burgundy or enjoying it now than I ever have. But going there helped. To, to get an appreciation for it. Um, and French Accorda is another one of those wines that the Psalms love. I'm like, okay, but I haven't had a lot of it. Mm -hmm. I, I have it, but you know, when I go like the Tech Psalm, I go to the conference, if there's a French Accorda around, I'll try it. I'm like, it's good. But it doesn't supplant other wines for me. But I'm also pretty much, as a wine drinker, I'm pretty much, I drink everything. I have certain favorites, but I don't like, I don't have something that I completely hold over everything else. So mm -hmm. some wine drinkers are that way. They hold your Burgundy, not just Psalms, but some people just hold Burgundy as the pinnacle of wine. Some people hold Bordeaux's pinnacle of wine. Some people hold Champagne's pinnacle of wine. You know, and they're, they're all worthy of the pinnacle of wine. They are. And whatever, whatever like Napa Cab and all this other stuff, you know, the, the stuff you, you hear that's expensive, mm -hmm. that they're all definitely worthy of that. But wine, like pizza, is a very personal thing. Um, some people like White Zin. And some people like Napa Cab, and they won't like the other. That's just how it is. Mm -hmm. And some people like Chicago style pizza. Like some people like pizza. Some people like pepperoni pizza. Some people like anchovies on their pizza. Like my dad. Spinach pizza. Spinach pizza. Hawaiian pizza. They want thin pizza. They want New York style. They want you know stuffed crust. I'm you know. so hungry. I know. <laughs> they, Let's get out of here. They want, they want all these types of pizzas, <laughs> but. You know, and some people, especially the New York versus Chicago style. Like, Chicago that's always a, wins. That's Deep dish. New York style. Um, but I like Chicago style pizza. I really like it. I kind of miss it, but I haven't had it in a while. The, the Geno's East is terrible. Yeah, it's but it's, always only, so the only, it's the only thing we got down here. That's it. And the one up, the one up in the Forum closed. 
Oh, good. Oh. But there's another one. I think, there's another one like I ten or whatever. I think it's still open. Oh, it's always still open. But the problem is, reason the problem is, is that it won't be successful here in San Antonio is because people aren't used to having to wait forty five oh. minutes for a no, pizza. No, there, there is one called Chicago style pizza on Blanco Road. Oh, there is one. Yeah, that is really delicious. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Okay. We um, have sponsors. <laughs> so should we go there one day? Yeah. Let's go there right now. Like maybe you gotta call the, it in forty five minutes before. Just maybe like maybe near the end of my recovery when I'm able to like kind of travel yeah. a little more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm gonna be like off. We like, need something to help you give you the heart attack that yeah. you went to to save. So, um, anyway, so yeah, so that's sparkling wine. So yeah. does it, did it give you an answer yes. or is it too rambling? Um, it gave me a great synopsis. Okay. Yes. Um, I'm gonna have a little more scotch just because. I need to go get the surprise in the meantime, Mark. Get the you surprise. Wanna, Hold you your wanna, microphone. Yeah, if you, if you want to tell the people to subscribe, hit the hit the like button. Yeah. We are back. All right, I've seen. So I'm going to put this down here. Go downstairs. <laughs> downstairs. So, um, <laughs> so while Christian's getting the surprise going on, um, I want to try these other ones yeah, real quick. Yeah, try so, it. I want to try the Pinot. Pinot Noir. It's pretty good. It's it's a good representation of Oregon Pinot, which is my preferred uh, Pinot. Yeah, yeah. Um, but as far as what I like in Pinot, even Oregon Pinot, it's it's okay. But it's also a you know a fourteen dollar bottle of Pinot, so it tastes about what it should taste like. Um, it feels like a little bit higher on the alcohol. I feel like you're um, It's got it's got the it's got the cherry. It's also got I, I see where you're getting it tastes like wood. So it's got like a cedar box component to it. Um, it's got like a little um, tobacco, kind of tobacco, kind of tobacco. Um, um, there's definitely a little bit of um, um, spice to it, a little clove, a little cinnamon, um, that, type of, that type of stuff. I mean, it's, it's good. And for, for the price point, I would totally drink this. So yeah, yeah. now I'm gonna try the, the Pinot Gris. What songs drink? Hashtag what's hashtag what some drink Underwood. Pinky's down. Hashtag pinky's down. <laughs> hashtag hashtag. I think I have a hashtag, hashtag. I think I have a pinky up on it. I'll look at the video, but I think I have my pinky up. Muscle memory. Um, yeah. Give us a um, slow motion right now. <laughs> um, so I, I, get, I definitely get the peach on that. Um, I definitely get like a little lemon, a little lime. Um, very acidic, not very, but it's high acid. We would call high acid mm -hmm. um, for freshing. That this is of the three wines, the most pool. Actually, of all the wines, it is the most pool-like wine. This is the, if this was like 100 degrees out right now, and we were hanging out at the pool, that's the one I would probably Ice cold. I, I would want to drink. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and cold. Like these were sitting in my wine cellar. That's what was so funny. I I had these in there for you know on a couple months. And uh, you don't normally put canned wine in a cellar, mm. but I had it there, so they, were, they had like this little chill on it, and they, 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 they get kept on the way over here. Now they're pretty close to room temperature. But let's, how about we uh, you judge yeah. them based on get, when you, when I hear cool, I, hear, I think of Zach Morris. So let's say which one's Zach Morris, which one's AC Slater, and which one's Screech. Oh. I rate, wow. I rate Screech as the top of the top. What? The most genuine. That's just my okay, opinion. Okay, so, so I, have to, I have to come up with someone's Screech? Yes, someone is Screech. So you're basically saying which one I like the least. The, she likes Screech the most. Okay. Let me try them again. I think I think it's it's the cool one is Zach. The, the like the real strong one is AC Slater. Okay. And then the one that kind of sneaks in and tries to make maybe make a joke is a uh, Screech. I like that because I didn't think Screech was bad. He was just annoying. Yeah. But by like sneaks in, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's always kind of around. Okay, so obviously the Pinot is the most muscular of all of them. So he's that's the AC Slater. <laughs> um, it's the, the buffest of them all, right? <laughs> Um, it's got cool Jerry. The cool background. one is the rosé, and Screech, as in the one that kind of sneaks in, like, hey, what, hi, I'm here. Yeah, peanut butter. Mm -hmm. There you go, Underwood. What's you your think? next commercial? I agree. You agree? How about you? you yeah, that's you, great. I mean, well, you didn't try the others. I did. Well, you didn't. Yeah. I'm looking. Right. <laughs> I focus on you. Sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. All right. So we're gonna have some. Um, let's clear. Let's clear the deck, guys. Clear the deck. Let's clear the deck. We put them on to the side. Uh, one, of, one of the things here, we're talking about the pool. I cannot let pool. this pool episode go with my favorite pool drink. And uh, this is something that I uh, concocted many moons ago. For uh, your non-wine drinkers. Well, you know, you gotta have an opt in. You know, I don't. I drink other things than wine. That's right. Uh, <laughs> so that this is something that I've come. I've been come to known as. Yes. Somebody who. Uh, does this so first of all let me introduce this uh, this little bottle this is from the region of mexico uh cate cate i'm sure you guys are familiar very good yeah. solid mm-hmm. uh you know mexican and beer wasn't this the beer that originated using a lime yeah and you drink because you had to drink it from a can yeah yes that, i don't know if that was a san antonio thing but growing up in san antonio everybody drank tecate for the longest time and then corona showed up i'm like what Get that glass out of here. Get out of here. Yeah. So this is a, it requires a little bit of preparation, you know, just like a good wine. It takes a little bit to make, you know, so yeah, okay. two minutes to make. So, uh, what am, you I allowed, do? am I allowed to talk about your faux pas earlier today? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. I'll, I'll wait for you to get to that okay. point. <laughs> so you start off, yeah. You want to fill the, the rim here with some uh, lime juice. All right. Okay. This is a very special lime juice, and you'll see why when we get to taste it. Oh, okay. Is it spicy? No. I've had this once back at your old place. Yes. Um, by the way, this is where Christian lives, so um, we're at his pool. This, yeah. is, not, I, this is not my place. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my living room. I have a pool behind me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we're at the roof, on the rooftop, uh, the rooftop uh, pool, and yeah. you probably can't see it. I'm pretty sure you can't, but the Pearl is over there. So my favorite wine bar in San Antonio, High Street Wine Company, is like literally right over there. Best place. Um, so I will be there the next two days during the day for wine classes, mm. and um, I will. I'm sure I'll be there at least one, two, three, four nights this week, Hope hanging out. Studied. You know, uh, so I'll help that, you study. There you go. So you got the lime juice there. Okay. You put a little salt, preferably some beer salt. Beer you know? salt. Okay. What, what you what you got to do is you got to put it right where the uh, the little the little thing is gonna yeah. drop in there. So uh, you'll see why. You just give it a couple little a couple little dabs. Hit actually, with, I want to say the dab. Actually, I want to say the last time I did this was World Cup. Wow. Because it was, I had like a weird Sunday off or Saturday off, and we went to the pool, and we were watching World Cup. Is that four and years I, ago? I want to say that, yeah. Oh. I want to say that Mexico was playing too. I think, I'm, I think they were. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, they're playing this Saturday. They are. They're gonna win. You want you want to go somewhere and watch it? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. Twin hey, Peaks. Go see my go see my girls over there. Your girls? Oh, what they're your girls? Okay, so I got Those, people, those girls are daughters of a guy, of a dad. They're my friends. Okay. Well, one one's actually one of them actually is my friend. We're gonna go do karaoke <laughs> tomorrow night. Um, but yeah, I mean they're cool. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go, go right. there. You wanna go? I'm gonna be drinking wine in Fredericksburg. <laughs> Terrible! And you're not bringing me? <laughs> She's not even bringing me, apparently. I guess not. <laughs> All right, All right. And so, so off camera, we'll talk about where you're going, okay. and then, then I'll see if I can set something up for you. Okay. okay. Uh, and then you always ask me if you're going to wine, in any wine area. Yeah. I, I know a so couple kind. people in the wine industry, a couple people. Just like two. Like two. You? Like two. Uh-huh. Yeah. So normally, right. so yeah. normally the last normally, step here, the last step is usually a little bit of Tabasco sauce, a little te- te- tekiki, as I like to call it. But but Christian, in showing me his his surprise, his shatterproof, the shatter, say, hey, they're shatterproof bottles. As he's pulling them out of the bag, what falls to the ground? The non-shatterproof Tabasco bottle. Yeah, sorry about that. We cleaned it up though. It's all right. Cleaned it up. So same thing. You drop a little. What is that? This is a little Michelada sauce. Michelada. So it's, it's a beer thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, ideally, please go ahead and go to Tabasco. This is but, not the same. Uh, well, you know. This is the first, by the way. I don't think I've ever had, like, well, I've never had this, obviously, but I don't think I've done, like, beer. Is there any tequila in this? No, no. there's no. Uh, that, so what we had up here oh, was just yeah, a little bit yeah, of margarita said, mix. So it's not full tequila. It's not like you're putting a shot of tequila. But it's a margarita mix. Is it's that a, what the lime juice is? Uh, it's a margarita. This oh. is a margarita. So you're having margarita, uh, you got a little salt, and then you got a little Michelada sauce. That usually is the best. You've had these. I have. Okay. I just thought act, I had a full don't, don't shot. Act, don't ask. Don't act like you've never had these. <laughs> so I've had one like four years ago. So there's a little. The, this is the way you so do. So then, yeah. You, you never so, lift it off the table. Bad luck. 
bad luck, seven years of bad luck. Okay. You, until, until you get it. So that what you're going to do it's going to pop it just like it would. Wait so, a, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, we should probably move this whoa, whoa, super expensive whoa, whoa, whoa. thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute uh, here, dude. I'll, I'll let you do yours first. No, it's a, it, you do oh, it together. It, it, okay. it is as a toast. All right, so. So, okay. yeah, normally you say something nice. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll wish us to Mr. Mark as he endeavors on his, uh, on his yeah, uh, upcoming my, surgery. Uh, my when, surgery, yeah. When, when, when this airs, he'll be nice and healthy. It'll be yeah, amazing. Yeah, I should be, pretty, I should be on, on a really good road recovery yeah. at this point. So, to you? Well, I won't be able to be doing this, so that's why I'm doing it all this week. <laughs> this uh, so, yeah, open it, wait about a half second, let the stuff go in there. You go as far as you want. I recommend going at least halfway, so then the lime juice and the salt and everything kind of sits oh, like, in there. Oh, like, wait. No, no, no. Or like, drink half. Water. Drink about half. Okay. If you can, if you can go all the whole, the whole way, you get a medal, which is really cool. You ready? Yeah. Right. Ready. There you go. Leet wine TV. Leet wine TV. No shaky ah, poo. There we go. It's coming out. Oh, the carbonation is way too much. <laughs> <Can't do it. laughs> I was gonna try, dude. Delicious. I really was gonna try. I really was gonna try. I to did it. To do the you did, oh my whole God. thing. I think I got about halfway. I here, think I got about a quarter way. And here's your middle. You just hang it on your neck. <laughs> my Italian, my Italian chain, <laughs> which doesn't, I mean, doesn't always show up on, on video, but Mr. so to explain, to explain what this is, you have the Italian hand, you have the Italian horn. These are protection from evil symbols. You have St. Christopher and St. Anthony. Hmm. My grandmother gave me these. Why well, should she didn't give me the Saint Anthony? I forgot who gave me the Saint Anthony. But the other three and, and the necklace where my grandmother gave it to me when I was a baby. Like Italian 18 karat gold. Nice. <gasps> Love it. Yeah. I think the other one's like 14 karat, I don't know. But yeah. There you go. Let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. So uh um, here. So we're done? Dude, we we under, just under an hour, which that's about my normal interviews. That's right. um, so um, thank you all for stopping by. Um, this is episode three, 411, so yeah, like I said, I have 8, 9, 10 still to release. Uh, 408 is I'm releasing the day before my surgery. Um, if you want to uh, click the links below to um, check out what's going on here. There is a PayPal link, or you hit the PayPal link, the, the, the donate button. If you want to, you don't have to. Send him some ducats. Send him ducats. You see, he watches. I do. This is my friend. He watches, all right? <laughs> so send a few ducats my way to help pay for wine or, like, I don't know. Um, and just to be clear about the operation, I, just real quick. Like, I asked for, like, donations, but I have really good health insurance. So it's not like I'm going to be, like, <laughs> destitute and I'm going to have $100,000 in, in medical bills. I'm not. But... It's still money I wasn't expecting to spend, um, several thousand dollars. So if you want to drop a couple dollars, it's okay. You don't have to. Um, I just figured, why not ask? Anyway. Um, why not ask? Why not ask? But really, I'd rather you donate because you like the content, the value for value, um, as my, my buddies or no agenda say, um, which I, I'm sorry, guys, I haven't listened to you forever, <clears throat> but you are one of the, one of the inspirations along with Gary, Gary, big inspiration. Leo over at Twit. You know, these are all like the people that influenced me on my podcast. Um, so basically three basically three podcasts mm -hmm. that influenced me in, in how I do my stuff. Um, but if you want to donate, no problem. Cool. Five bucks, ten bucks, twenty bucks, I don't care, you know. I'm not asking for thousands of dollars. Anyway, <laughs> um, so you want to do that? Cool. Um, the click the link, links below to uh, check out should I do it? I'll do. I'll even do Tecate. We'll we'll give them some love too. Um, <laughs> Barefoot Underwood or Union Wine Company Tecate. You want to learn a little bit more about them? Uh, do that and uh, click the links above to friend me up. I know I'm not on social media right now very often, but I do check in about once a week ish or so. Say so will while I'm on the medical. He'll leave. be back. I'll be back in full force once I once I'm back back. But I'll 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 accept your friend link. And uh, yeah, thank you for both being on the show. Welcome. Super cool. I get. I actually have friends. Did you know that? He paid us a hundred dollars to be on the show. I just met him today. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you all for stopping by. We'll see everyone again next time. Salute. Salute. I don't have the no whole. Right. There you go. Awesome. Did it.